In custom car audio, we are constantly needing to make parts that fit against other parts in the vehicle. From speaker pods to adapter plates that interface with system controllers to full-blown subwoofer enclosures that match the side of a trunk. With 3D printers and CNC machines becoming more and more affordable, using technology to create custom parts is now more accessible than ever. But the challenge becomes how do we capture the complex shapes from the vehicle accurately. Obviously the solution is 3D scanning. Now recently here on the channel, I used a scanner to capture the trunk of a vehicle so that I could design and build the entire enclosure and beauty panels without having the vehicle in my shop. And then I installed everything once it was all built. For that build, I used a scanner that relies upon its core technology being infrared structured light. While I was able to achieve great results with that scanner for that application, there were other applications that I found I had a little bit of trouble with. Scanning dark black surfaces could raise a challenge as the geometry of the parts tends to blend together more and be difficult for the structured light to capture. Structured light also struggles with very reflective surfaces like the gloss black that we frequently see in vehicle interiors. Also, the scanner, just by nature of being an entry-level scanner, didn't have as much dimensional accuracy that we sometimes need. Now in my research, I found that another technology for 3D scanning was becoming quite popular, and that is a hybrid design that uses a hybrid blue laser and full field structured light. Unfortunately though, these scanners typically seem to be in the $5,000 and up bracket. A little hard to justify, especially being a hobbyist. I thought I was just going to have to make do with my structured light scanner until I saw this. This is the Metro X scanner from RevoPoint. This scanner does feature the hybrid blue laser technology that can achieve excellent results on measuring dark and shiny surfaces. And that's all without the use of scanning spray. Even better yet, it also has a metrology grade accuracy of up to 0.02 millimeters. Perfect for those smaller details that I'd like to capture. And best yet, at the time of making this video, it comes in right at that $1,000 price point. When I first saw the Metro X online, all the specs really made me think that this would be a great solution for our industry. But is it? We definitely need to do a test scan in this video to see what not only the scanner has to offer, but also its paired software, which is equally important when it comes to using a 3D scanner. Now, full disclosure, this video is not sponsored by RevoPoint. I had to buy it on my own because I really think that it's a good investment to test out and see if it's worth it for our community. You know who is a sponsor of this video though is New Concepts. When it comes to wiring car audio builds, my go-to source for wiring is New Concepts. Their Colossus Flex line is great for power wire. It's ultra flexible and tinned OFC, which means we have tons of current handling while also being far better for marine environments or under hood in a vehicle. Their basic power distribution parts also are simple and reliable as well, allowing for compact use throughout a build. They have speaker wire, signal wire, all sorts of different wires available on their website, so be sure to check them out out for your next car audio project at the links down in the video description. So first off, the Metro X comes in this hard carrying case, which is nice because obviously this is a precision piece of equipment. We want to protect our investment. Also nice that we just have somewhere to store everything. Up on the top here, they give us the quick start guide along with this precision piece of equipment. This is the calibration plate and they have it in this nice soft cloth bag in order to make sure that it does not get damaged. Now do keep in mind, I've used this a few times, so things are going to be bundled up a lot better when you purchase this new, but it does have this cradle that allows you to hold it on the included tripod. This tripod right here, which can be used in conjunction with the automatic turntable. The power supply for the turntable also stores inside there. And as a side note, the turntable is for doing very small parts. Also the needed wiring for connecting to the USB on the computer, along with the power supply for the scanner itself. I forget how many scanner targets were originally included, but they give us a bag of those as well. A USB type C to type A adapter. And in my case, I got this little sample part here that you can do some practice scanning with. And then of course, last but not least, the scanner itself. And this has a little wrist strap on it. 
So here is a closer look at the scanner. It has these kind of nice textured areas on each side, which makes it easy to hold on to. It is relatively light. It doesn't feel really cheap or anything necessarily. The buttons have a nice tactile feel. These buttons are used throughout the scanning process. So nice that we can just touch those with our fingers without having to resort to using the computer necessarily. And I don't really know a lot of the technical terms here, but you can see the two different lenses. Basically, by the device knowing the space between these two different lenses, it's able to determine the 3D shape of different items and take measurements in order to get our scan. Now I do have the Revel Point software loaded on my computer here. It is worth noting that 3D scanning is very taxing on a computer. You definitely need a powerful computer and you can check out all the specs for the minimum system requirements for this software. But Revel Point software is called Revo Scan. But the first thing I wanna do here is actually run through a calibration you can see that I've got the power supply for the scanner which is right here that's plugged into power of course the power connects here we have the USB cable connected this is all covered in the quick start guide and I don't know if you can hear it but the scanner actually does have a small fan in it inside which is running right now as well but I'm going to start our calibration now the calibration process begins with scanning this QR code on the back and then it's just a matter of following the step-by-step -step directions that the software will give you I found the process to be quite simple and easy with the calibration process complete, we now need to prepare our part that we're going to be scanning. In this case, we're using an A-pillar here in preparation for an A-pillar speaker pod that is going to attach to this. We want to capture this surface here so that we can model the negative backside of it and 3D print a pod that is going to affix to it. This, of course, is just our example here, but first off, you see that I have put a bunch of these scanning targets all over the part. Now there are some critical important steps on these. First of all, don't be afraid to use a lot of these. The more you use, the better. Typically on this particular scanner, it wants to see at least five dots at a time in order to maintain its position and know where it is in space. This scanner does have the ability to do this full field structured blue light type scanning, which does not necessarily need the tracking dots. Instead, as you are scanning, it relies upon the features of the part in order Order to maintain position but in my experience so far using the metro x for what we're doing in our industry it's going to be a lot better to just plan on using these target dots along with the cross lines mode a few other tips on the markers, you want to avoid having them on the edge of the part, and that's because later in the software we can remove the markers, and if you do it at the edge, it leaves an incomplete hole that we can't easily fill. This will make more sense later. Just make sure that it's good and away from any of the edges. You also want to put these in an area that is as plain as possible. As an example, I avoid this major curve area. I don't have any on that curve. Another example, the apex of the curve is right here. I have this one down on this further flat area, not here. And then it's also a good idea. You can see that I've 3D printed some of these target dot marker holders. Basically, this allows me to kind of save some of my markers. I can put them all around the part, which will allow us to easily maintain our position. But do keep in mind that it's super critical that these stay in the exact same place once you start your scanning process. If you bump anything, it's going to throw it off. Now, another good thing to do is to kind of separate your part from the surface that you are scanning on. In this case, I've done this with just this simple wooden block. This again will make more sense later, but if I did have this resting on my table, it's harder to find the exact edge here later when we go to remove the table because we don't want the table to be a part of our scan. By having this spacing here and separation, it's going to make sure that I get an accurate measurement of that actual edge. And again, it will be easier to trim and simplify everything up later in the process. Preparation is absolutely key here I did one last review and it did occur to me that maybe it's a good idea to have some target dots just floating out here as well if you imagine what the scanner is seeing that way I know that I'm always seeing at least five as I go through so getting into the software here I first noticed that there are a lot of different options for how you can set up the initial scan you can tell the software whether it's a black part that you're scanning in this case since my part is more gray I just went with that general selection 
The software has this very easy to use quality bar on the right hand side of the screen that you can monitor while you're doing your scan to know if you're too close or too far. And also before you start the scan, it's very easy to set up the exposure to make sure that you're seeing the laser lines on the part. Now in 3D scanning, we always need to consider our application. I know it's easy to think that, hey, I want as much detail as possible, but it does bog down the computer more and can lead to a slower scan. It can also be a lot harder to work with the model later when you go to reverse engineer everything. So for an application like this, where I'm just looking to capture the general shape of the A-pillar, I don't necessarily need a super fine target point distance. I can increase the distance a little bit. I do like that the software has a bunch of those little tip bubbles so it helps you better understand what each of these different options is. And don't forget that we have all the buttons on the scanner so when it's time for me to actually start the scan like I did there, I just did so by pressing the start button on the scanner itself and I can also use that same button to pause the scan as needed. I don't necessarily have to do it on the computer. Now as I go through the scan process here, the green on screen means that I've fully captured that area. The target point distance that I've selected for this particular scan allows me to work pretty quickly. When we do try to do a more detailed scan, it does take a little bit longer for that color to go from like a red orange up to green. Now something I really want to point out here that I've experienced on some of the other low-end scanners is it seems like I would quite frequently lose tracking. That is not the case here. This is probably a combination of some of my experience now of making sure that I have more than enough target dots, but of course also the scanner itself. It does a good job of maintaining and no Knowing where it is in space. The fact that we're not constantly losing tracking just makes the scanning process a lot more efficient. Now with this software, we can always pause our scan and we can take a look at the point cloud data and make sure that we measured everything we want. If we didn't, we can of course resume the scan and if we did, we can complete the scan. So evaluating our point cloud, we can see that there is some noise, some points floating out in space, but no big deal. This software does a great job of handling those. You'll see that in a second. Another thing it does a really good job at is removing the markers. Obviously we don't want those marker dots to still be on our scan and we can have it effectively fill that in in the data. We'll see that fill process in a second here. Another nice thing about this software is we can easily undo changes if need be and we can go back and change those parameters. Now obviously we have a bunch of data here that we don't need. We have all of those scan targets that were on the table. We have part of the table itself. So now we need to highlight some of that data and delete it. And there's a lot of different options in the software for this as well. Now, while we still have our point cloud, we can edit it and we can simplify as needed. Again, this is application dependent, depending on how much detail you're looking for. We can also use similar simplification tools when we are in the mesh edit. And of course we can edit the mesh to fill in those holes from the targets previously. Once we're happy with the mesh we've created, we can then X Support the model and we can use that as needed in our different CAD programs. Now, like we were talking about in the beginning of the video, one of the main benefits of this blue laser technology is the ability to scan dark parts that are extremely detailed. We can get a lot more detail. So in this case, you can see that we have this speaker grill that is from the top of a Jeep Wrangler dash. It covers the dash speaker. Obviously it has a really fine mesh above the speaker. So I wanna see how much detail we can get there. And also just as an example, a use case here is let's say that we're trying to design a replacement that is going to pick up these existing OEM tab locations. Let's see how much detail we can get out of scanning those as well. So let's take a look on the computer here. In this scan, I focused a lot more on getting as high of a quality of scan as possible rather than trying to optimize the computer's speed. So this did take a little bit longer to run. When I did the meshing step, it took about six minutes, but look just how much detail we can get here. We can actually see this small little Chrysler logo in the scan data. To give you an idea just how small that is, you can see it there on the back side of the actual part. You can even see some of the small little manufacturing dots on the back side here. It even picked up the thickness of this sticker that is also on the back side of the part. From a reverse engineering standpoint, this has a ton of information. We could easily get measurements off of these tab style designs to reverse engineer them. We can easily locate them, obviously, in relation to each other. This is a really, really high quality scan that's going to enable us to design an extremely accurate part. 
Check this out as well. Of course, there's the mesh. You can see the holes for the speaker, but there's also kind of this reinforcement mesh that's a little bit larger. See that diamond that I'm kind of outlining there? It even picks up that information that you can see here in the scan. Now check this out. Now that I've pulled this into my CAD software, I did a quick measurement. It's kind of hard to see there because it's blending in with all the mesh, but it's about 0.461 inches on this little tab that I've measured right here. And sure enough, if we take that same rough measurement in real life, 0.461 as well. Now, what is the downside though of this scanner? Well, with this being more priced in the entry level category, the scanner itself is a bit slower than some of those higher end machines. Of course, its performance is highly tied to your scanning PC as well, which is kind of another downside. You do need a very powerful machine. But honestly, if you're already doing 3D design work, odds are you're going to have a more powerful computer anyhow. Personally, I didn't find the more quote unquote sluggish experience to be that bad at all. I just know that it's a little bit slower because I have had some experience with some very high end scanners in the past. But honestly, at the $1,000 price point, I am blown away with how quick this thing actually is. But get this, RevoPoint did recently announce another new scanner to their lineup called the Metro Y. And I'm looking at my phone really quick, the specs. So the Metro X had a scan points per second of 800,000 and the Metro Y comes in at 1.7 million points per second. Another advantage of this new Metro Y scanner is it's actually also completely wireless. I could definitely see the advantage of not being tethered to a wire while you're going through the scanning process. So maybe that's another scanner that we need to take a look at here on the channel as well. Overall, for those of you that have been following the 3D scanning world and trends, you can understand my excitement here. I now have a scanner that gets pretty darn good results for under a thousand dollars does it relatively quickly and works great on the challenges that we often face in custom car audio with the vehicle interior if you guys want to learn more about the metro x scanner check out my links down in the video description and also don't forget to check out our sponsor for this video new concepts consider them for the wiring and wiring accessories on your next car audio build learn more about them as well down in the video description a big thanks to them along with Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible and thank you guys for tuning in and watching.